Welcome to the newest installation of A Quick Shot of Rock. We're here with Descending the Fall. Thanks for coming to our studio. Thank you, know. you for having us. What about your music makes you guys stand apart from the norm? Guitar solos, man. Like, I like guitar solos. I like Hell yeah. riffs. Not just like, you know, single little parts, but like an actual riff in a song. Um, a lot more clean vocals and screams. So we try to stay on the clean vocal side Using of Using every drum you have on the set. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know, the diversity in each track. Okay, Not every so song sounds the same. What is your your group's writing dynamic? Um, I write all the lyrics. Okay. Um, usually the plot and stuff. Uh, the music is mostly me sometimes, but lately it's been the whole band. We've okay. all been kind of getting together and kind of trying to do it. Um, it kind of just depends on the song, too. Personal inspiration is important to us here at the Dayless Project. Can you describe what inspires you? Just, like, going through stuff, you know what I mean? Like... Let's face it, we're not rock stars. Man. We're not rock stars here. Like, I work a nine to five. I got a job interview in the morning. So, I mean, you know, stuff like that. It just really inspires me. Like, the the dream, really. Just like I, I'll be honest. Everybody's gonna say, "Oh, you can't be a rock star." No, like, if I have, I have the dream. Like, I, I think we can make it. Like, and I'm gonna do it. Like, we're gonna do it. You know, let's be honest here. Like he said, we're not rock stars. Usually. We don't got anything. We're not famous. Right. But like, just regular get guys. that one kid or that, you know, that, that crowd that like will sing along with you and it's just like, dude, it gets emotional, man. You're like, that's why I do this. You lie to me. You lie to me. Can you explain uh, the personal relevance of your favorite track from the CP. I like personally, "Lied to Me" is probably my favorite one. Cause like listening to the lyrics, it's something that everybody's gone through. It's a it's a breakup song. Yeah. And I but like when you listen to it, it's so open. Like you can put it to any relevance. Like whether it be relationship, family, it's like a really emotional song, but it still it still gets still gets me going. So that's what I love about it. That's my personal relevance. Is it's two faced. Oh, uh, I think the track that means the most to me on that would have to be uh, "Narcissist," okay. because Ooh. it has such a double meaning to it. Because most people think it's just about former members of my old band, right? But it's not. It's actually about a few other things about some people in my life that really backstabbed me. And so it was almost my way of calling that out for the first time, like just being honest. Right. And I just didn't care on this record. I was just going to write the lyrics that I felt that was really there and just let it out this time. Right and on. just go for it. So that's probably why that, that song means the most to me. What did you guys grow up listening to? And which band made you really want to start writing music? <laughs> Ooh, drop the mic and walk with me. This band has nothing to do with the style of music. It's a thousand foot crutch. Man. Yes. It's just a rock band, but like the lyrics and the vocals captured me ever since I was a kid. Right. It was like them, and then I'd have to say uh, Holly <coughs> Rivers okay, because they're great. so different, and they're still doing guitar solos and they're still doing power vocals. They really do what they love, so that's why I do what I love. Awesome, you know? that's a great answer, man. Thank you for yeah. sharing that, Crow. I'm gonna sit over the bite in your tongue. For me, um, well, it's so hard because I I play drums, but I do a lot of writing too in the band, which is a first for me because I've always felt like just a drummer. But for this one, for my drums, writing probably be Blink-182 and Avenged Sevenfold, Travis Barker and The Rev. Hell yeah. Just amazing. For songwriting, I'd probably say mine is Green Day. I've always been a Green Day fan. Like My first record that I heard by them fully was American Idiot. And okay. then I sort of backtracked into their other stuff. They take a lot of old sort of like progressions that you don't hear anymore. They put the modern quality to it, but they still keep, stay true to what it is, and that's what I want to do. You're trading now with the dancing boost. Time is slipping with every passing second. And for your leather leg that fills your lungs. I push you down the side my Leaving you out of the court. Your angry sick will throw your lies to the river crib. To the inflation that will lie to the places to the real sleep. You guys have such powerful instrumentals. Why why mask that? What's the emphasis of vocals? Was this your intention? Did you realize you were doing that? Or is that just a personal style? I didn't want to put so much into the actual instruments 
one, because I wanted everybody to hear what we were saying perfectly. I wanted the lyrics to be clear, because I had something I wanted to say to the scene as we planned to remaster the album. Um, I almost want it to be special when it comes back out. Plus, I also like when like bands, when they, you can hear like the, as they get better in their albums, like the quality gets better, songwriting gets better. I've always wanted that. I've never wanted to come out of the gate setting the bar too high and then never being able to top. In your track, Always Me, you do you use what is known as the millennial whoop in the chorus. Was this purposeful, or are you even aware of it, the millennial whoop's existence? When I wrote that chorus, it was one of the first songs I ever tracked for this for this project, and um, it was just already in there. It was in my head. I was like, oh, I'm gonna sing this here. Okay. And it was just all natural. Like we didn't even, I didn't plan anything. I didn't even know that existed, honestly. Or, and um, I encourage anybody watching to Google it. Uh, the millennial whoop because it's right it's rather interesting to know about it you know um so let's see the questions what do you guys want to talk about now you know <laughs> you got a show coming up december 5th we have a show that's sponsored by ap magazine with ice nine kills it lives it breathes sorry the sailors the illustrator and us yep. if you guys should coach so come check it out if you're in the michigan area come on down december 5th at the shelter in detroit Hell yeah. All right, so look for those shows coming up on your social media feeds and whatnot. Thank you for joining us, The Dayless Project, with a quick shot of rock installment featuring Ascending the Fall. These are great dudes, powerful music. Come out and see them. Yeah.